Hello. Hello. Welcome to the Connection Couch. And today we're talking about the LinkedIn algorithm. Stay tuned. Thanks for sticking around, really do appreciate it. My name is Reg. And I'm Jo. She is Jo. And we're the Connection Couch, and we chat about LinkedIn, we chat about connection, building relationships, and essentially it's all about growing your business, isn't that right, Jo? sometimes we make up words, you know. We love to make up words. We do. It's one of our forties, let's be honest. It is. So if that's what you like, which is growing your business and social media and building connections, then I'd suggest that you hit that subscribe button and maybe hit the like button for this video. And then when we put out more videos, you'll be told explicitly that we're putting out videos. Absolutely. And you can be one of the one of the cool gang. That's right. All right, so today we're talking about? The algorithm. The algorithm. Yes. You paid attention in the meeting. I had hey. <laughs> No, it's me that doesn't pay attention. <laughs> um, okay, so talking about the, the algorithm um, and it has been slightly updated recently, but let's just go back a little bit. So for those who may be not aware, explain to me what the algorithm is and how, how it works. Mm. Well, every platform has to have an algorithm because it, it sort of influences what you see in your home feed. Mm -hmm. Without it, you just see everything in chronological order, which could be boring. It could be Particularly boring. Particularly if someone posts 10 posts in one hit. Like if I get 10 posts read, that's what I'm going to see. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not... It's not just that, it's the, the non-learning aspect of it. Because if you go through, you get all your posts and you go, well, yeah. I like this post, I like this post, but I don't like that post. It's not yeah. going to learn, is it? So no. it's just going to keep giving you the same. Well, that's right. And just as a side, you can actually reorganize your home feed to be in chronological order if that's your thing. So it's a very oh, top cool. yes, right. yep. to right hand side, you can do that. But generally it's by top content. Now top content is dictated by the algorithm and the algorithm is there to help you, to help you get a better ex experience of LinkedIn. So mm. some people think the algorithm's evil, um, you know, it's controlling what you see and what you don't see, <laughs> I know. But it's, it's a good thing. It, that it, if you don't do anything, you're not actually helping yourself. So. Yes, this is my downfall when it comes to <laughs> algorithms in general, because yes. I really don't like Facebook. <laughs> and I was told a long time ago it's because I don't know how to use Facebook. Possibly right. Which is probably, it's not that I don't know how to use it, it's just I don't use it in that particular way. So it doesn't understand yeah. what I like. So I just keep, keep getting served up rubbish, so therefore I don't go yeah. to Facebook. So it becomes a sort of self fulfilling prophecy, really, of. And LinkedIn's a little bit the same, but there have been some updates that are there to help you, but you also need to help the algorithm yes. just frame it. So um, there are three types of people, or three broad categories of people I, when I talk about okay. types. Um, so number one? Number one is a lurker. Number two? Is a engager. Right, and number three? Is a promoter. Oh, okay. Lurker. So that lurker, now, <laughs> now by lurker, it's not, it's not a negative. Um, it depends oh, on, it's not. A lurker is not a stalker. That's a oh. whole different kettle of fish, and they're the ones looking through your window and through your bin and following you around. No, a lurker is someone who consumes content. So they might be consuming your content in the feed, but they're not engaging with you. So they're not telling the algorithm that they're interested in your content. Now, a lurker, if you think about them in real life, not that they're not real, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, in the physical world, they're the introverts. They're the people that go to a meeting and will listen. They're the listeners and then they don't say anything unless they've got something to say. Mm. I like yeah. those people. Yeah, they're just sort of, they're very thoughtful. But, I mean, they're thoughtful anyway, but thoughtful in, in the way that they converse. Mm. Um, to the point that you might have to go, did you, do you have anything to say? Did you yeah. like that? Did you? Have you got a pulse? Yeah. Mm. Um, so sometimes you need to nod every now and again. Just, yes, just, you know, just, yes. Just, just to keep yourself awake, listening. show them away. Yeah. So they're on LinkedIn, they're lurking, they're consuming your content. They might think your content's fantastic, but the, they're not telling the algorithm that your content's fantastic. And then therefore they're not framing the feed, you know, and, and sort of getting more of the stuff that they want. So if we look back to the algorithm now, um, in terms of where it's, it's come from and it's, it's you know, it's constantly evolving, but it used to be that the popular people, the influencers, mm, got a lot of it. attention. Now, the influencer types are, well, there is a, a category of people called LinkedIn influencers, which are the Gary Vee type people, um, your Richard Branson's, um, it's, it's a... Deepak Chopra. Yeah, it's the people that are really well known, well respected, and, and people like to follow their content. But what you used to see is they were getting a lot of airtime, mm. and meaning that people would see the content, and then I would... I would engage with the content, you know, like or comment, and then you'd, you'd see it. And then you'd see it again when Bob engages, then you see it again when Barbara engages, and you just keep seeing the same old content. And it's boring as, you know, anything. Mm. 
Um, so they changed that. So they made it. mammals. Well, yeah, it just it was rewarding the popular people. It's like you know the cool people in the, at school that mm. had all the cool clothes and the new shoes, and they were getting all the attention. And you know that's that wasn't really serving the network because that's only a small percentage of people. So then they changed it up, and it it became about engagement. So you know if you were engaging with stuff like liking and commenting, you're more likely to see that stuff again, which is useful. Mm. Which is why I tell the people who are lurkers to engage. Um, then they mixed it up a little bit and started showing content from people that you never engage with because they were trying to encourage people to to see new stuff. Mm-hmm. So you'd find it would um, it would just be sort of a bit, it would look a bit random at times. But the n- latest update is pretty exciting because it, it actually is. is exciting for the lurkers. Ooh. Hmm. But we're going to come to that. We will come to that. We will come to we, that. We both had a realisation there. So <laughs> I yeah. know, but it's all good. Um, <laughs> so if you think about the home feed and how we use LinkedIn, so there's a term, a video term, and I forget what it is, Red, um, but how do you stop and grab attention in video? It's called a pattern interrupt. That's the one. That's the, That's one. the one. Yes. Yeah. So how, we, can, we can use that on LinkedIn by interrupting the feed and doing something different, doing something that's going to capture attention. Like my video I did a couple of years ago, which I created in Snapchat, of uh, all yes. things. I don't <clears throat> use Snapchat, but I use it to create content from time to time. And I created, I wanted to share the point about why we should connect with a message. And I wanted to say that when you don't, it sounds robotic because you're letting LinkedIn speak for you. So I created a video of me just saying, I'd like to add you to my professional network in a super flat voice in nine seconds. And I added the, the alien voice filter oh, and, and one of the other visual filters. So I looked very futuristic. Now that a Snapchat created video in LinkedIn at that time was a bit different. Ooh. So it, it was, I, I would talk about disrupting the feed, but it's really a pattern interrupt, isn't it? Mm. In, in terms of the content. So if you can do something like that, that fits your brand, to, and, but you can't do that all the time because otherwise it becomes a pattern, doesn't it? Yes, the pattern <laughs> becomes a pattern, exactly. And that doesn't work either. So in terms of pattern interrupting them and grabbing attention so people do see and engage with you, with video, how do we do that? Well, there's a number of ways you can do it. Um, it could be literally a change of pace in the, in the actual video. It could be a change of framing. You could uh, zoom right in. It could be movement. Mm. Um, it could be a, a change of music. Could, there's lots of ways to do mm. it. But I'm thinking specifically in terms of when you share a video to LinkedIn, there's only one, one thing that you see first. And we talked about that in right. another Right, so your thumbnail. Episode. Thumbnail, yes. Oh, I got the quicker this time, didn't I? Yeah, you did. <laughs> <laughs> so in terms of thumbnail, Reg, yeah. how can I use that to to capture attention? Well, really, you've only got two things. Mm. Uh, from a, a, a YouTube point of view, t- I'm, I'm speaking English, aren't I? You are. Okay. Um, <laughs> I think. The, from a YouTube point of view, you've got two things. You've got your title of your video yep. and your thumbnail. Yeah. So two things that are very important, and both of us are going to get across why someone should uh, click on your link to watch the video or your thumbnail, whatever mm. it is. And we do talk about this in more detail in um, a, another video about mm-hmm. links. We do another. We do. Yep. Yeah, we so, can put it up there if you like. Up there. Yeah, why not? Um, so when you share the YouTube video to LinkedIn, and you're hitting the home feed, and you're trying to interrupt the pattern in order to engage people, in order to feed the algorithm. Mm-hmm. Long winded story there. Wow. Um, your thumbnail is really what you've got to. Because that's, that's, that's the visual. That's the visual element, yeah. And then you've got the content, um, how you write about the content. So whether it's a video, whether it's an image, whether it's whatever, um, the content is there to engage. And we've got, um, if you write with a framework, which you've got my E, E cubed plus IC squared framework. Yes, exactly. Which is explained in another video, but I'll quickly talk about it now, just because oh, cool, we're here. Um, so if you can educate, enlighten, or evoke emotion, evoke emotions. such as like entertaining, entertaining yeah. invo- evokes emotion. That's a nice way to engage people. And of course, if you can invite conversation through a question or index your content as well to help it get found, because hashtags will influence the algorithm too, actually. Yeah. Because if people are interested in, in a hashtag, as in they are following that topic, and one of their connections talks about the topic that they're following, they're likely to see it in their home feed. So yep. the two marry together. So there's that aspect. Um, and I had a point to this, and, and I've gone off. I've You've gone off and you just left you. Yeah, what, ah, what was the point to this, Reg? You know my point. Uh, was I supposed to pay attention? <laughs> I don't know. Oh. Anyway, I'm just checking you're listening. Um, um, no. no, not really. <laughs> yes, you were. <laughs> yeah, but, but my point is with okay. this is that <laughs> when you share content in the home feed, 
to, in order to engage people, you need to have some content that's engaging. So if you are if you are a lurker and you're trying to get people to engage with you, you need to kind of get out of your way and yeah. start sharing yeah. content or curating other people's content, which we also talk about. Um, but if if you're the type of person that's a promoter on the other side of the scales, we've got the three personalities. Promoters tend to be all about themselves. They're promoting their latest wares, their latest blog, their latest video. Me, me, me. Pretty much. Um, but they're not <laughs> adding any value. So they're less likely to engage people because it says me, me, me. It doesn't say us or we or, you know. Or the rising tide. That's right. <laughs> so you want to make sure it's written the right way. Um, but do we, do we want to get to the big, Ooh. the big change, Ooh. the biggest change, I think so. I think which I'm pretty so. excited about because to en- people who lurk, like I said, they're not giving any credit to the person whose content they're lurking on. Now, a couple of signals. Um, so LinkedIn works on signals. When you see content in your feed and it's beyond the two lines, you get the see more. So if feed I, me. Yeah. So see more. Now, it, LinkedIn does not tell you who's clicked see more, which really frustrates me because I'd like to know these things. And I like to have metrics. So that, that's a metric that they've obviously got that they don't share. But if someone clicks, so they go to your content, they like your content without clicking see more, they're actually demonstrating that they actually haven't read your content. Yeah. Now, why they've done that is, you know. Pods. <clears throat> well, pods. <laughs> Um, so, have we talked about pods? Uh, we have spoken about pods, yes. We had an episode about pods. We did have an episode about pods, correct. Yes, yes. we have, so um, look out for that one. But yes, it'll be pods, out there. Pods are something that, it's, it's all about orchestrated engagement, and people buy into pods, and it's, it's all... It's a whole manu- victory, I think. It's manufactured. It's it fake, is. It's manufacturing flake, fake fluence. Flake fluence. Flake fluence. Fake fluence. Fake fluence. It's another word I made up. You're just amazing at this. <laughs> I nearly made up flake fluence, but that's, that's a whole... That's a whole different thing. That's a whole word um, in itself. Um, There's a chocolate so bar involved with that, I think. I think there is. Mm. Oh, chocolate. Oh, don't chocolate. starve, don't Ooh. starve. It was actually National Chocolate Day this week, so International Chocolate Day, I should say. Anyhow, we're moving, we're moving off topic. So fake fluence and manufactured content is something that... This is why pods exist. Now, with the new update... Pods can't kind of tap into this new update. So no. I'm going to get to that shortly. But yeah. I just wanted to mention the whole see more thing because if you like things you haven't clicked see more, you're not really invested in that content. So you're better off clicking see more to feed the algorithm and then like because it, 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 you know, it's just useful as a lurker. Now, the biggest, the big update, it's called... <gasps> it's called dwell time. Dwell time. Dwell time. So it's all about... The amount of time you spend dwelling on a piece of content. Oh. Dwelling. Hmm. Dwell. It requires a face for that, doesn't it? It does. How do you dwell? One hmm. dwells like this, I believe. I think you do. Um, so when you dwell on a piece of content, think about how you can, and this is more for the lurkers, because the people who are the conversers, the engagers, mm-hmm. I mean, that, that's where I would put myself. I'm pretty engaged. I'm quite comfortable being out there bit more of an extrovert. But if you're an introvert, you're not going to do that. You're going to consume and quietly go, hmm, that was interesting, but you're not going to say it. Things that make you go, hmm. hmm. So the, the way that a lurker can can sort of give credit to the person whose content they're consuming is to dwell on it. Dwell. So it's just literally the time spent watching, reading, Pretty much. looking at that post. Yeah. Now, what you do while you're dwelling, hmm. who knows? You might be thinking about Brad Pitt. I don't know. He's still a thing, isn't he? Well, or, it's still um, around. I don't think yeah, I'd be thinking about it. <laughs> like, you might not be thinking about the post, though. so I guess they don't know what's in your head. But the fact that you might have clicked see more if it's a longer post, and you're now sitting in that content and you're consuming it, mm. whether you're thinking about it or not. So you're dwelling on it. So that's something it's measuring. Now, if, like I say, if you don't engage, that's, you know, that's a game changer for people that are introverts on LinkedIn. Mm. Because it, it means you, you can't orchestrate that, you can't automate it, you can't join a pod and dwell. I mean, actually, you know what? There'll, there'll be a dwell pod. A dwell pod. Oh, please. <laughs> actually, when I say can't, I know I really shouldn't say can't because the opportunists will come up with all sorts of stuff. They'll probably, someone will develop a third You had it here first, ladies and gentlemen, dwell pods. Dwell if pods. you ever hear a dwell pod, put it in the comment <laughs> section below, please. I want to know. And I'm not creating one because I don't believe in that sort of no. rubbish. Um, but third party tools, you can buy tools that automate anything, including... Um, recommendations, connecting, messaging, all sorts of stuff. Commenting, you can auto comment, really? auto endorse. I reckon you can auto dwell. Someone will cr- auto some, dwell. Yeah, someone's going to come up with that, and it's going to actually. You know what? It, it's probably not. It's probably not that hard to be honest, no, because I some think of these so. tools 
they sit on a profile for a few seconds and then they go the next, because they do profile viewing automatically, oh. which is dwelling actually. Yeah, that's, I, I, this is really scary that you know people do this sort of stuff because it, it's such a waste of time. So do, please don't create a, a dwell pod or an auto dweller. Please don't do that. Um, and if you find auto someone dweller. doing it, don't buy into that. So yeah, don't do it um, because it's about building relationships. It's all about being dwell worthy, Joe. Dwell worthy, yes, that's right. So how do you make your content dwell worthy? Because you want people to stop and think, hmm, do dwell face, hmm. <laughs> we have to do our dwell face and you know Reg, is, Reg can hold his dwell face for hours hours and hours professional dwell facer yeah <laughs> but you know that did you should put that in your LinkedIn profile professional dwell facer I've been called lots of things I've never been called that no well, there you go new, new calling for you Reg mm. so yeah so you want to make it dwell worthy by using my E cubed plus IC squared formula I'm not going to tell you what that is again because you've already seen it um, but writing content and sharing content that's of value to your audience essentially it's not yeah. self-serving yeah and that's really as far as we can go with with that because that's, that's a whole different yeah. episode and a whole, whole content on its own absolutely but, but yeah so essentially you want to be putting out stuff out there that's it's it's a give to get really isn't absolutely it? and do, and also think about what you're seeing so if you want to see more content from reg dwell on reg and use the dwell face dwell. While hmm, but don't, don't look up look down and maybe watch or read or whatever it is <laughs> Yeah, well, I guess I'm just thinking webcams and all that sort of stuff. Are oh. they reading your face? Because I did see an AI tool that, um, it was about Donald Trump, Trump, actually, reading his facial expression, the micro expressions. Oh, right. I would recommend putting one of those little camera protectors over your um, Mac, you know, yeah, you've got yeah. a, a um, camera on your app, because you just never know who's looking and watching your dwell face. And I've got Ooh. a, you know, resting B face, probably dwell face oh. happening, and yeah. I'll probably, I'll probably look constipated more than anything else. <laughs> Yeah, so there you go. So dwelling is a thing. Um, if you hear people talk about dwelling on LinkedIn, it's I've, actually part of the algorithm. Yeah, now. I think we're dwelling on this too long. We are. See what I did there? I know, I love Excellent. it. Excellent. Well, I think that's quite good. And yeah. I, I think it's a big change um, when it comes to signals for LinkedIn. Yep. So that's, um, yes, yeah, interested to know your thoughts. Let me know, are you a dweller? Are you, well, no, first of all, which one are you? Are you a lurker? Are, are you, you an a engager? Or are you a promoter? Don't be a shy if you're a promoter. You can let us know it's all good. We won't, you know, we won't ban you or unfollow you or anything, will we, Joe? We no. love everybody. We do. We do. Thank you for sticking around to the very end. We do appreciate it. We have lots more hints and tips coming up in other episodes. So make sure you remember to subscribe and hit the like button. And uh, we'll see you next week. Here, we Joe. sure will. I'm off to dwell now. Mm. Mm.